Okay, so this time around we're going to be talking about noses and some general tips and stuff for how to handle those. Let's see here. I have a reference pile that I would like to pull up. Okay. So as far as noses go and placing them on the head and everything like that, it's always helpful in my opinion to, like you start out with your general head lay-in. Let me switch to a different pencil here. You start out with your general head lay-in of just like you can think like that Loomis type construction. Where you've basically got that ball more or less. And then you drop that side plane off of the ball. Connect it back up to the back here. So you've basically got your simplified head shape. And then from there, you can drop that center line down. And we have the brow line. So typically, when I'm trying to find how to place the nose, I'll get this general scaffolding set up for the most part and you can do the thing where you chop off the side as well and and uh, you know do the full the full Loomis kinda approach I don't do that every time but when I was first starting out I did it a lot but as I've uh, gotten a little bit better I started to do that whole exact process less but I usually get to a point where, you know, this point, and I start basing some of these things off of the person's head that I'm seeing. So it's not just the same generic shape every time, but it's, it's related to their type. And so we have that eye socket type shape that's based off the skull. That's usually a pretty good starting place for locking down anything on the head. Of course, it depends what position and, and pose and everything you're drawing. You can link it through on the top with the rhythm. But usually when I'm finding the nose at this point, depending on the pose, it'll come off this eye socket just down more or less straight or the angle of their nose. And then I go over, and then I go back up, and that up angle is parallel. So if you remember from mathematics class, if we have two lines that are, if these two lines were extending out infinitely for as long as possible, they would never touch. Those lines would be parallel. And if we had lines that were like this, intersecting or crossing each other and making a right angle on every side here, 90 degrees, that's a perpendicular line. So we have parallel and perpendicular. You want to make sure that if you go down across and then back up, that this is parallel to that same angle that you, you drew. An often, a mistake that people make often when they're starting out is from this width they go straight up and that causes the nose to really shrink and you lose uh, some of the planes and, and stuff like that so to get the full idea of the nose across you need to make sure that you you stay parallel from there it really helps to go and identify this idea of a shape that we can think of as a stretched out M so if we have the letter M, we 
that right there is basically a nose. Because if we draw sort of the bottom of it, and then we have like the septum, and then the, the nostrils that come up this way, and then we have the sides of the nose, and then this represents the ball of the nose. So you can really get away with this, this stretched out M shape for the bottom of the nose, and you could draw it in all kinds of different perspectives. And then that usually becomes all the shadowed area. Then again, it comes up this way. Then we have our nostrils. We have the septum. And you can see how that starts to build it up that way. So in this example right here, a little bit smaller with my brush because we're looking at this head in a three-quarter type perspective so this M shape is going to come up and then down like this and we're not really actually going to be seeing much of the other side of the M so we're kind of only seeing one half of it it's terminating at this point right here from our angle that we're looking at and oftentimes you can combine that into like a shadow if light is coming from this direction you can bind that into a shadow that comes off the nostril. And that's a good place to use some straights in a shadow like that. So we have a shadow there. And then if you remember from the eyes lesson, we have a really well-defined shadow here usually underneath the brow bone in that corner of the eye socket. So between these shapes, you could actually really do a lot to indicate like the angle of the head and the general lighting and some of the shapes that may be specific to the person you're drawing or if you're drawing it from your head, you know, specific to your character or what have you. And so this is like the baseline starting point. And then as we start to study more, you you start to understand like, okay, there's a ball of the nose happening. So, or a bulb, right? So we've got a bit of a curve or an angle happening here. And then that goes up more to the bridge of the nose. And this is where you really start to carve it out to be like more of the specifics of the person that you're, you're drawing. Like they might have a really aggressive curve right on the, the glabella as opposed to you know, having a more subtle curve. And then they have their bridge of the nose, which may be poking out a little bit more, or it may be a little more smooth. So that's kind of, you know, you start to get in that really basic shape. And then as you progress through the drawing, you start to make it look more and more and more like the person that you're drawing. So we can do one more maybe that's slightly different angle. Start out generally with some of that Loomis construction. Down for the chin. A little bit more cranial mass in the back. And you want to try to get comfortable constructing these things with more angle relationships rather than a lot of rounds. Because as you start to use more rounds in a drawing, you're going to start finding that your drawing is going to lose structure unless you're doing something like really stylized and uh, really you know of a certain style that has a very round shape design or something like that then you're going to be losing uh, structure if you're trying to draw realistically that's part of the 
I'd say one of the big things you want to think about if you are trying to get more realistic drawings or stuff that just feels a little bit better um, and more solid is the idea of using more straights and constructive elements. So in this, for example, coming down for that eye socket, and then I'm coming f down for the eye socket, but then out for the nose, tip the nose maybe somewhere around here. We have that stretched out M shape that we're viewing more from the bottom now. So we're sort of looking up into. that nose and then we go back up we can come down for the other eye socket here as well might as well something kind of like that and to develop this nose a little bit further have that bottom septum kind of connecting into or rolling into the bulb of the nose. Nostril coming over, the inside of the nostril and then the outside of it right here, coming back up. So this is based off of one of Loomis's drawings that is in Drawing the Head and Hands. A lot of the sketches are really, really good. Okay, and then might as well finish it off with some of the neck. But as far as like placing the nose on the face and constructing it like that, that's that's sort of how that that goes. So really try to familiarize yourself with just this idea of having this, this M shape that you stretch out and you turn in perspective and that kind of becomes that, that bottom part of the nose, which is a really great anchor for just starting to lay in your head and getting this three-dimensional kind of shape down. And like I said, depending on which angle you're drawing this at, you might only see more of like one side of it. And some of these shapes will really be determined by different ethnic types as well. So A lot of times with people who are Caucasian, you'll find that they oftentimes have a more pronounced bridge of their nose. It, it really depends. So like if we're drawing from profile, a lot of times for people who are Caucasian you see more of this kind of like straight kind of look and then that goes up into the brow the brow will be more or less exaggerated usually depending on uh, if somebody is male or female
or you can also see variations where it's more like you can give, give maybe a bigger brow on this one. I'm just going to get this general angle. Notice how, again, I'm doing this with angles, like angle here, angle here, straight line, straight line, straight line, down into the lip, rather than like rounding things out, which, again, if that's part of your character design or your, your character that you're trying to create and it's more cartoony or something, then you can start to do that kind of stuff. But generally, that's not really going to apply. And if it is, it's usually going to be more subtle. Um, so sometimes you'll find that people will have a very pronounced, really pronounced bridge of their nose. That's more like this. And then it comes down into that ball of the nose or the bulb down into that septum, which is right here, and then down into the philtrum. These are all like pretty common variations, I would say, that tend to happen. So this one right here is kind of neutral, and these are where you're starting to exaggerate more parts of that. Occasionally you'll see people with a nose that's more like, almost kind of like a hook shape. It goes out more and then back in. Rather than curving inwards. Then again, septum down into the lip, filter room, and then the lip. Um, you know, and sometimes you'll see that really exaggerated, where it will go out further like that, and then down more kind of like this. And it's important to note in some of these circumstances, many circumstances where you're drawing the nose, you can sort of see it in this one. That ball of the nose, the bulb, really does it overlaps the bridge. And I'm playing that up here just because for the purpose of example you're not usually going to get a, a cut line that's that hard. But it's just really important to understand that that nose is a three-dimensional form and even the pieces that make it up you know, they overlap each other. So in these kinds of circumstances, if you're doing just with like lines, you can get that idea across more by like, you know, making the line of the bulb a little bit thicker. And then maybe it thins out a bit and then gets thicker again as it goes towards the bottom where we've, if you have are familiar with the idea of line weight, and like gravity pulling down on a form can, you can make your lines a little bit thicker usually looks pretty good. Same with this one, we can put a little bit of bulb out there and maybe just a little bit of kind of overlap happening. You know, but I kind of want that one to remain neutral. Um, on this, so again, some of these things go to like just people's character types and stuff. So it's just something you really want to be aware of. And then if we were going to sort of divide out the forms here, we have the bulb, then the nostril, septum in here. We've got that bridge area, but really this is like the nasal bone of the skull. Usually same thing on like this, this point that you see, that's part of the skull really if we're looking at that person in profile. And then it comes down here to the cheekbones and stuff like that. And so oftentimes with people that are uh, 
have more of like an African ethnicity or even people that are uh, more Asian. Uh, most of the time, like, um, I think more Western Asian. Uh, if you think like kind of Mongolian or things like that, then you start to see a, a different type of nose uh, sort of appear. And oftentimes that will look a little bit more like this, where you've got more of an aggressive indent for that glabella, right? That glabella is this point right here. It's that shape that we draw sometimes when we're constructing out the head. It's like top plane of the nose, side plane of the nose. And then we have the glabella, which is right in between the two points of the brow. And that keystone shape that you sometimes hear people talking about. So with these noses of other types of uh, ethnicities, those other variations that you can see, usually those are wider, flatter, and more rounded, generally speaking. And you just have that more, especially on um, people of more of a Western Asian heritage and Chinese, you see this like very indented isn't the right word. It's just very more smoothed out of a glabella shape rather than a more subtle curve. You see a bit more of an extreme curve here or a larger curve. And oftentimes with much more rounded kind of look to it and wider, which I'll do a sketch from the front where we can see some of these differences a little more clearly. And again, but that ball of the nose and the nostril and everything like that is still more or less like a lot of the planes and everything. None of the planes are really changing. They're just, you know, there's more variation within them. And if we're drawing in profile, again, we go down, across, up that same angle, and then over into the eye socket so that whole bridge of the nose and everything really kind of curves more around that way and then if we go up we sort of get the eye seated somewhere around here the profile maybe a little bit further forward but that's an important angle to familiarize yourself with is this one even in profile because again it's no different than if we go like on on these other ones right where we go down, over, and then back up. It's the same thing in profile. It's just a, you know, you have this line here which actually creates more of an edge on the cheek, right? You see some half tones here oftentimes that create that, that edge of the cheek, edge of the nose, you know, up into the eye socket, which you start getting some half tones on that bottom plane of the eye socket as well. But this edge of the cheek is really important because that helps, you know, define the nose and still the character type of the person and everything. Um, you may find that if those person's cheeks are a little bit more full, then you'll have more rounding happen here. And if the person is a little more gaunt, you'll find less of that happening, and it'll be kind of more straight and angular situations. Um, oftentimes, you'll find half tone and shadow falling into this top crevice of the nose, and then back down into the laugh lines as well. And again, on something like this, this is very angular on this one, but maybe this one is a bit more smooth. Right? And age is something that affects this a lot of times as well. Older people generally are going to have larger noses and you know maybe drooping down a little bit more. Um, let's see here. 
let me just find some proper reference to display this concept from. So, you know, if we're drawing this more stretched out M shape from for a more Caucasian style nose, you'll find that it will fit this kind of look, not really too extreme. But for, you know, this type of nose, more African or Asian kind of look. A lot of times when you're drawing that nose, you could actually stretch out that M shape even more, wider bulb of the nose and the nostrils going out a bit further as well. Then we have the shadow kind of falling below that, down into that septum. But the main takeaway really is that you know, just wider, flatter, that ball of the nose, which on this one maybe would be a little bit more angular as we go up the sides. That ball of the nose will be a little bit more rounded, more like a ball, really. Um, I'm using the, the terms ball and bulb interchangeably. And you'll find that this, um, this top part of this M actually will be again more circular oftentimes than than angular as well as the nostrils being a bit more circular or curved I should say as well but the upper, upper part from the front uh, position doesn't really look like it changes too much I mean you'll get some different type of uh, maybe softer planes and softer transitions and things uh, as opposed to you know just more hard and angular planes septum down here and so generally a good way to stylize for males most of the time I would say if you're going to be drawing characters or if you are you know just drawing from life and, or you know doing a portrait more finished one and you want to make it a little bit more masculine or a little bit more feminine or what have you generally for males doing more of just a straight nose like this and keeping it nice and angular is a pretty good idea for like a more heroic kind of male type and uh, generally for females actually going more this kind of route is going to be a better bet where you've got the nose maybe slightly upturned as well and you kind of have this this sort of uh, sometimes you'll hear it be called like a little ski jump nose or something like that where kind of angles off the the front like that because of that bulb of the nose um, as far as drawing and painting them, let's get into just some quick examples. But first, one thing that I want to go over just as far as a structural thing is concerned is, let me open up Pure Ref actually, and drop this image in there. That'll make things a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to drive home as a point is that the septum forms into that that ball of the nose. And it's really important to understand that and like how the nostrils are formed, I'd say. Because you'll find that a lot of times that, that septum 
feels like it actually like curls up into the back side of the nose and then the nostrils come and sort of overlap that. So if we're just going to draw this out. Go over to the other side. Let's get the big angle. Just really want to be comfortable with this idea of the ball of the nose, the septum, because the, the ball or the bulb of the nose sort of ends around right here. So you get a little bit of a bottom plane to it, and then it, it goes around the top, obviously, and then we have into the, more of the nostrils, and then we have those bottom planes of the nostrils as well, which we're definitely seeing in this example. And then that septum sort of merges down onto the face and then it goes into more of the philtrum shape and, and things like that and the lips um, that we get into. But that septum really merges down onto the face and in certain angles it can look a little bit more like, you know, like on these examples, right, like this, where it's going up into and then the nose, the nostril overlaps that. You get that look a lot. And just depending on the angle that you're viewing from, it will sort of look like that. Generally, I'd say you don't really want to play that up and you kind of want to keep it how it actually is, where it's more merged, you know, merges down smoothly, but you can do a little overlap here as it sort of overlaps that the start of that philtrum shape down into the lips um, you know just because that's kind of how that form is happening and then as far as like contours go it's kind of like rounded out like that until it gets more to this where it starts rounding the other way and or not necessarily rounding the other way, but just following that form continually around. And then of course again down into more of the lips. This is a very Scrooge kind of guy. And the chin and everything like that. So yeah, very important to understand that about the septum. It's it's kind of a cylinder-like form that passes down and then from certain angles can look like it curls under. Um, so with most of that stuff out of the way, not really a whole lot to talk about with noses. I mean, you can get really pretty deep into it, but those are the basics, I'd say. With this idea and this concept, the stretched out M, being really, I would say, one of the most important things you could know when drawing noses. Really, the stuff that I went over first, like about the general placement going down, across, and then up, how that sort of is handled, and then this stretched out M for positioning and placing the nose. Those are really, you're just going to use that time and time and time again. And then as you start to study more of the, you know, ethnic types and stuff like that, then, then that information can uh, come in more handy as well. But just by pure observation, you could look at somebody's nose type and say, oh, that M is, it's a little bit skinnier or uh, that M is, you know, much wider or much shallower and the side planes are longer. So you just want to practice a lot of lay-ins like that, I would say. And now we can go ahead and maybe do 
a little example of a nose. Maybe this one. Let's look at this sheet and see if there's a different one we would rather do. Maybe we'll do a couple of them. Maybe this one and then this one up in the top left. Because there's something going on up there that I sort of want to talk about as well compared to some of these other references. And in some of these pieces of reference you'll see like these little plane changes and stuff. Like you can see the outline of that M shape as it comes up and then down and then back up through this side. Uh, maybe we can even do like a little trace over session at the end to show just a couple of things. But for right now let's start with this one. Go ahead and resize that. For anybody who doesn't know, this is an application called PureRef. And you can get it for completely free or you can donate to them. But you just go to their site and they have a lot of really great, uh, it has a lot of really great functionality uh, for reference handling. So as far as like painting this goes, we can just start out with, or drawing, you know, either one if you're drawing traditionally, my process wouldn't really change that much in a sketchbook or on newsprint. There's my M shape, more or less, coming down to here. This is maybe a little thick. Also, the painting application that I'm using is Clip Studio, as opposed to Photoshop. I like Clip Studio a lot more. It's, in my opinion, it's just a lot more lightweight. So, based off the handout, like as far as some of the simplified forms go, you know, we're just looking at a big block here. These are like the big simple planes of the nose. Bottom plane, top plane, side plane in this particular uh, in this particular photo reference. And then what you can do is start to develop more of the form, say, oh, okay, I kind of see that ball of the nose or that bulb. Very shallow bulb from this angle, like it's not very pronounced. He has a very subtle bridge as well of the skeletal structure in there. Just a very slight S curve on that. Then we kind of fold over and then it goes back up into that eye socket. Okay, we have some half tones and shadows occurring over here, so I could just maybe map those real quick and dirty. Okay, so I'm going to come off this bulb and across, cut completely across like that, and that brings me right into the septum. And then you can see this other nostril sort of emanating from behind that. Okay, then we have the other nostril. We have a little bit of the actual nostril hole right in there. And if we jump over to the other side, try to keep more or less that same perspective on that shape. Got a nice curve there, and we've got some cool shapes. You'll find oftentimes the nostrils will create pretty specific shapes. And in certain poses like this one, especially up tilts, you're going to want to try to get those. But a lot of times if the bottom of the nose is in shadow, for example, you know, this is a nice specific shape that you'd want to lock onto, but like in here, you're not going to want to outline every detail of of that. And maybe I'll show how to handle that as well. We can maybe kind of approach that in this nose up here. Maybe we'll do three of them. Okay, so we can go ahead and kind of just get that mapped in and then just a little bit of structure. There's the rest of my septum. So it kind of goes down into that filtrum area and we've got the cheek and stuff off the side. Now we're going to come around for the nostrils. Very curved shape on him in this one so I'm going to use more of a curve and then for more of the angular parts or the constructed parts I'm going to go a little bit more kind of just like straight lines and straight construction back up to the ball of that nose which is somewhere around right here I'd say. It's kind of like that tip of the nose, the ball of the nose. Top of the nostril. 
coming down over and curving underneath. And then as far as, you know, we have this bottom plane of the nose, right? But this was actually receiving light from this direction. You know, we're, we're getting lit on the underside. So we've got more of a shadow occurring being cast off of this nostril onto the cheek. So I'll just quickly map some of those. You can use the same process that you use it at Watts, you know, with the the shadow mapping and trying to get your softer edges mapped and, and things like that. Okay, we've got a little bit of a edge happening here. I'm just going to squint down real quick. Sort of happening on the, the ball of the nose or the bulb. And coming back up. If I squint my eyes down really low, this whole shadow kind of continues up the side of it. We're going up into the eye socket. Really, this stuff is not really that hard, or at least the concepts. You need to practice the concepts a lot, or practice the, the ideas a lot. But really, you know, it's just look at the shapes and the values and the edges and use the tools you have, like squinting and, um, you know, and, and hard and soft edges and all these types of things to sort of uh, help you along with that you know but ultimately it's just you know look at the edges look at your reference see if you can sort of make an assertion as to what's happening I'll just go and soften these up a lot of softer edges like firm soft kind of stuff happening okay, and then we've got kind of crisper shadow happening along the cartilage here on the nose. Then coming down, see how my original M shape, stretched out M, follows right along this line and then we've got that plane being separated there right along that same division point basically. It's a little bit slightly different but you can see how close that that general shape that I made got me to this. And even on that nostril, they're not hard edges. It's not one like really hard edge like that. It's, it's even softer on that. And the crispest edge in the whole entire picture is really this upper part of the nostril. And so maybe we'll try to see if we can get that in there when we put in a little bit of value. Okay, so we can maybe go in with more of a two value now. I'm just going to go ahead and lower my opacity down there. Sort of a decision that you have to make about how you want to break up that shadow pattern. Okay, we've got more or less that stuff in there now, and then I'm just going to go for a quick softening pass. Really soft edges along the bridge of the nose in this one. As a general digital painting tip, typically you don't want to use tons of like blur brush and stuff to soften your edges. You want to use more of like a going back and forth between the two values that you're trying to, to soften between. And I kind of do a combination. I use some, some of the blur and then some of the uh, some of the going back and forth between the two. If you were only going to use one, I would say use the, the round brush only and just kind of 
go back and forth between them and sort of work the edges because um, that's just stronger the blur brush is a little bit faster and I feel like you kind of get some edges that you you can't really get easily with the other method so and you might be wondering like well how's this what's this like staggering happening where you go down over and kind of cross like that I think that's just some of the cartilage in the nose basically um, sort of making some interesting shapes and stuff all these tips that I'm giving are more guidelines I would say for how you actually can approach this you know nothing's really going to be exact even up here we have like some edge staggering and, and interesting things happening okay then we can maybe go a little bit darker with some of our values slowly work our way up to that more full value. can still squint down at this stage. We can see that we've got a darker shadow happening and then it gradiates over to more light on this nostril. So it's just like try paying really close attention to those values and those edges and things because those are are especially those edges and of course the values too. Edges edge and value is like the you know that stuff's really important. I think values are if you're trying to make stuff look realistic even st with stylized art values are like some of the most important things just as a baseline fundamental that you just have to get right. You can play with value for sure, but if you don't keep your value structure very well defined then you're gonna run into some problems because imagine that I'm like trying to judge the values for for this nose right and I'm doing these shadows right now and if I put in a value like this in the shadow and I am trying to tell people like hey no this this part of the nose is a shadow this is all shadow that's going on here but obviously visually it doesn't look like that at all right shadows are dark so they need to be made darker than the things that are lit up in the image so uh, if you don't get your value structure right if you're working stylized or realistic then the viewer I think is gonna have a hard time relating to the image simply because the way we understand light working is with dark shadows and light lights and not the other way around now you can start to bend that rule a little bit when you get into like color manipulation and stuff like that because you can trick the brain into thinking something is darker or lighter than it is by chroma like the amount of color uh, intensity but I'd say that's a bit more of an advanced uh, subject or advanced topic. Okay, we can go and make this nostril a bit darker. Generally, you don't want to make the nostrils black because it's just going to draw a lot of attention. It's kind of an awkward shape out in the middle of the face, and you don't really want that to take away too much from your... Uh, your eyes or where you're trying to put the focus. I guess if you're trying to put the focus on the nose then you could do something like that but generally in a portrait we're trying to do the eyes. Okay now if I look at this reference I see right here there's a half tone going on. Even if I squint my eyes down I can see it's a little bit darker right here. This is the side plane of the ball of the nose from what I understand. And so because of that, we're going to try to get a little bit of halftone right into that area. Make sure I squint down at my drawing, make sure my values are staying intact, and that's still reading as a light area.
little bit of half tone as the shadow transitions. Okay, again, if I squint down here, I'm just going to paint while I'm squinting. And I am definitely keeping this shadow along the edge more defined than what's in the reference. But we can do a little bit of a gradation from the back here. You just kind of keep working these edges and things. Could maybe just power in some dark around the edge here. I'm going to ignore that eye for now. All that dark around there is just going to help this read a little bit better. Sometimes it's nice to take a more textured style brush and then just do like some... This is what I did in the handout for that one that I did from Imagination. You just kind of like cut into this a little bit. That's obviously a very digital thing, but... You know, always try to get a good vignette on your a good vignette on your stuff. If you're doing little studies and things, I think that it's just really uh, generally a pretty good uh, idea. Why is this not wanting to blur? I think because I don't have any paint right there. So I'm just kind of softening some of the edges here along that. We can try to think about where we want to keep some crisper edges. This brush that I'm using, TW Main, is Travis Wilson, because that's my name. And then it's basically it's just a hard round. And then I've got a couple other ones. This has the same exact properties as a round brush, but it only has a, a different material as the uh, it's not a straight circle, it's a material that I've chosen. I've got a few other cool brushes too. And if people are wondering about that, then I can I can uh provide some resources on that okay and then again with some of this stuff you just want to think about like where's my center of focus <laughs> even in this note something as simple as a nose it, it helps to think about that so maybe we can make sure to keep some of these edges around the tip of the nose like really sharp and crisp and then put like a really nice soft edge next to some all these hard edges so we get a good edge contrast And then we've got a little bit of halftone appearing on that other nostril. Coming down here. Can maybe do a nice hard edge right here. And you sort of start to see how this slowly, slowly builds up the form and everything. Do a little blur there to get that soft edge nice and soft, and then go back over it a few times. And then this is the stage of this where you could really spend a long time. Like I could spend easily an hour, like trying to get all these edges to appear like really nice and, and soft and get everything feeling really realistic. It's getting there right now, but you know, I could spend a lot more time to to get that 
to just make it look really cool. But I'm probably going to call it there on this one and move on to maybe one more example just so I don't waste a bunch of your time and you know we can kind of move forward. But yeah, this very subtle and fine like edge manipulation is you could spend a lot of time in there. A lot of time. And then as far as like highlights and stuff go, you can maybe carve out a little bit of a lighter value just on this very front plane. And we're not really going to have anything. All the brightest stuff is happening down in this quadrant. So we're going to try to keep that. See if we can add little hairs. This guy's mustache or stubble. <laughs> um, okay. And then some actual highlights where we just go. We're not going to go fully bright white, but we can do just like a little nice round shape I think right there maybe right there maybe just slightly brighter then take a little blur and just blur it out slightly so that's kind of how I'd approach this one I'd say and then just you know if you want to do some of these exercises and again working in your sketchbook is fine working on newsprint is fine any of that kind of stuff working digitally is fine all that good stuff maybe we can because we're not totally full value maybe we can go just a little bit darker a little bit darker than that oh I'm not get some really nice contrast okay so that's our first quick example of just a nose and we saw how we built that up we did the M and all that kind of thing um, what was the other one I think this one so I wanted to do this one as well because I feel like this is just a really good example of a nose that is we very clearly see this cartilage of the nose and by that I mean the the bulb of the nose Right, we see this coming down against the top plane, the corner of the top plane, and then we have this like jut out and then back in for that that bulb of the nose. So let me go ahead and get a little bit smaller here for just the drawing size. And how I'm going to approach drawing this one is going to be more or less the same. Here I'm sort of starting with the the shadow pattern a bit more. Okay, we're going to go up to that nostril, which has a really cool shape, back down, and back over. Again, we're not really seeing the other side of it because it's so dark, but if we were going to draw it, that M would kind of come down over here. nostril go back up ok 
kind of something like that. That whole ball of the nose, again, is existing in this kind of area. We've got that eye socket merging right down into the glabella and then into the bridge of the nose. Then we have this, you can really see it pretty clearly on this, which is pretty cool. It's like the way that ball of the nose actually fits on there is a bit more like this. has a little divot in the middle. That's why you see some people with like a split in their nose like that. Uh, it's because of that cartilage, just the way that cartilage is like forming. Ultimately all this stuff on this side is going to get lost in, in shadow. We might pull out a little bit of the information just to try to see if we can make it a little more clear. That's kind of my general scaffolding, I think something like that. I want to start getting into more shapes and stuff, but I'm going to treat this more just like painterly style where I find those lines, I start to blur them out, then I find them again, find them again, find them again, and it's kind of just a more painterly way of working, I guess, as opposed to drawing, you know, being super draftsmanship oriented about everything. But, Generally, that's a good way to go for just for like understanding. But uh, I don't always work that way. Sometimes I do it more draft like and really structured draftsmanship. And then sometimes I'm a little more pinchly. I feel like my, uh, my disposition is to be much more kind of feeling it out and going from a pinchly manner rather than kind of like exact, engineered, precise draftsmanship. But it is good to practice both, I think. We're trying to be well-rounded artists here, or at least I am. I think most people that want to do art tend to want to be well-rounded. And so part of that is learning painting, and part of it is learning drawing, and being really diligent to both areas. Okay, just trying to nail down the shape of this nostril. Try to be really specific with those shapes in, in poses like this. Or poses with in noses like this. <laughs> um, because, you know, you want that, if that nostril is really visible clearly, generally you're going to want that to be uh, a well-designed shape, you know. And not really try not to do it like too half-heartedly or anything like that. Maybe start to fill in some of this value. Just with a little bit of value, it really starts to come to life. This reminds me of some of the Vanderpool noses he's got in his uh, his book. And that's also part of the handout, is just like, you know, some quick comments on why do we study Vanderpool? What's, what's the point of that? What's the important part? And at least for me, as far as I understand it, it's more about like, he, he provides a really good baseline for you on your drawing of features, in my opinion. He provides really good, solid examples with nice edges, nice rendering, nice lighting. And I think those act as like a really good standard for, for what like a generic feature looks like. And then from there you start to learn some of the more like variations and, and things that happen. And then you start to, to learn how to apply 
those renderings and stuff that he's showing you to those specific circumstances. He does a good job of like showing the general structure that you should be learning through rendering because he's really, you know, paying attention to all these little on noses, like little cartilage shifts and things like that. And just like showing you the ropes for how that stuff goes. Um, he doesn't really draw like really structurally, like you'd see like Michael Hampton or something do. He's got some more constructive and linear drawings. And those are pretty helpful too, in my opinion. They're like the little ink sketches throughout the book. Um, so there's a lot to get from him, in my opinion. But again, you don't just want to go study only one person. So if somebody says, oh, you need to learn features, go study Vanderpool. Study maybe a little bit of Vanderpool, a little bit of Bridgman, a little bit of Loomis, dip into some Michael Hampton, you know, and you'll be in good shape for sure. And then go, and depending on what you want to do, I think it really helps to go look at like, you know, your more stylized stuff. Like go look at some some anime and manga and how they're stylizing the noses and how they get rid of a lot of the information. Go look at other, you know, DC Comics and Marvel and that kind of stuff. See how those guys are stylizing their noses. All that kind of stuff, you know. Very helpful to just learn a lot of it. And then once you start to really know and learn a lot of it, then you can really make informed decisions about how you want to make stuff look. Go study from other painters as well. Gil Elvgren would be a good example for a very, um, a very idealized type of nose. Okay, we've got a little bit of tone on this side plane happening. You can notice that I've made the, the ball of the nose quite a bit dark. That's because oftentimes when you're drawing noses, like if we we're painting this in color, the nose itself, like the nose tip and the cheeks, tend to be like a channel of red that flows through the cheeks and the tip of the nose. And typically when that happens, you could actually decrease, if you're drawing it, you can make the value of your nose tip a little bit darker. And that sort of implies that there's a darker reddish value sort of happening across that. Um, I think that is very handy because you can also get your highlights to appear like more crisp and nice looking. And it just provides a nice gradation, I'd say. We have a little strip of light happening through here, which is the corner of that bridge of the nose. Oftentimes you're going to see highlights on corners of objects and where planes change. Let's start to delve into some of that. Okay, and then we're getting more of this kind of cartilage shape on the top here. Uh, attempt to not round this out the whole way, but actually keep it a little more angular. Because if you round that out again, like we talked about earlier, that's going to start to break down some of the structure. For the nostrils, for example, in this dark side, or darker side, you can keep it really kind of uh, just subdued, just a little line basically, and a small indication, maybe one side soft, one side a little bit harder. That's all you need really for indicating a nostril that's in shadow. So oftentimes when we have a whole shadow coming off the bottom of the nose and it's all filling up this whole area with shadow, you can get away with just some really simple lines. You know, you don't really have to get in like specific shapes and, you know, really defining stuff. You can keep it generally pretty soft and light, uh, lighter value, 
right? You don't want to go full black in that nostril again because that's gonna it's gonna start to break down some of your uh, your value relationships most likely, and we want to keep those value relationships relegated to where we want our eye to be looking in an image. And so a lot of times when you're drawing and painting noses, you're going to find halftone on this ridge. You're, in this upper part of the nose, you're going to find generally a, a nice halftone. We talk about that in the handout. Uh, let's see if I can bring that up real quick. Right, like generally halftones are going to be more present in this top part of the nose and on the top plane of that nose. It's all about those planes and that plane breakup, right? And so we can see that at play here, where we've got more of those half tones happening towards the top, and then as it falls off, we're actually getting some lighter values in the back. I've probably got these half tones a little dark. So let's see if we can just scumble over them real quick to lighten it up slightly. Make sure to stagger that edge really nice. Get a good core on there. As it kind of goes into this back area. Other side of the nose and into the eye socket up here. And this highlight, I don't want to leave it just a boring circle only, so I'm going to make some crisp edges on it. I'm going to blow out some other edges on it. Maybe we can bump up that value slightly too. Generally, the highlights on noses, unless you want it to look like really kind of greasy, generally those, those highlights are going to be a little bit more, just the lighter flesh tone, right? Because if you get a little bit darker on the nose tip, and then a lighter flesh tone, then, uh, then that highlight is going to read. Go ahead and maybe just a soft lightning pass on this as well. So I think that's more or less going to kind of do it. At least we're getting pretty close here. Keep that really crisp and hard edge along here. Try to keep our ball of the nose and our nostril separated with a little bit of half tone indication. Come around, see if we can find some more of this nostril to give it a nice shape, really crisp edge along the bottom. Really crisp edge along the side of the nostril. little bit of vignette work. Do that and then kind of blur it out a little bit and select places. So there you go. That's kind of some some nose information between these and this other stuff here. I hope that uh, that helps a little bit. Describe a little bit more info about noses and about just general drawing principles and all that good stuff. So do a bunch of these.
and practice a lot of these concepts and have fun.